Hello YouTube! Welcome! This is my spring update on the aquaculture greenhouse, covering lessons learned and changes made from when the tanks first begin use in February until the end of May. So starting in February, for the first two weeks into February all the tanks were cycled and ready to use. Some plants were added to the bins into the pool, and they grew very fast and well. Many of the semi-aquatic plants were sold at the March Expo. I added some axolotl eggs to the pool and they hatched and grew up pretty well. We had some juvenile axolotls added into the bins and they did well in February. Most were sold at the March Expo. Daphne was added to the 220 gallon IBC tote. Their numbers increased very fast and the colony was thriving. The water began to turn green in most of the bins as the plants had not fully taken root and the sun was bright. We also did some ordinary gardening and greenhouse use. Many types of seeds were sprouted with great success. The water temperatures hovered around 62 degrees but dipped as low as 55 or got about as high as 70. The outdoor highs were 42 to 91 degrees, usually around 65, and the lows were 62 to 26, usually around 45. Overall, it was still a tad cold for many tropical fish, so I waited until the water was warmer before adding fish. Coming into March, the semi-aquatic plants were sold at the Expo and then replaced. The frog bait's growth slowed for some reason, both indoors and outdoors. Guppy grass and hornwort began growing rapidly. I started a java moss growing experiment mid-March, trying to find the best way to grow moss under the bins in the ambient light. Three bins were set up, one with gravel, one with soil, and one with no substrate at all. The IBC tote with Daphnia is still thriving. Some Daphnia are added to each bin as additional starter culture in early March. And regular harvesting of the main culture for feeding my fish begins. The Florida flagfish were moved out to a bin in the greenhouse. They're hard to see, but they seem to be doing well. Some Epiplatus dagiti were added to a bin, but they disappeared within a few days. I presume they jumped out. Axolotls in the pool were growing up. It's hard to get a good count. The water is very green, but there appear to be dozens, if not more than a hundred of them. All the bins without fish or axolotls mostly clear up by the end of the month in March, possibly due to the Daphnia. About 10 each of Blue Dream and Bloody Mary Neodynia Shrimp are added to the two 20 gallon tanks at the end of the month. Overall, in March, the water temperatures hovered around 68 degrees in the greenhouse. Still a tad cool, but not bad. And the outdoor temperatures had highs in, from 42 to 81, usually around 68, and lows from 70 to 36, usually about 50. All the ordinary garden plants did fantastic. In April, red, gold, and blue endlers were added to each of the bins. The Daphnia IBC tote water cleared up and the Daphnia are still thriving. They're collected and fed to my fish every few days and yeast spir or spirulina is fed after collecting. All bins without fish also have thriving Daphnia at this point. The Neocardinia shrimp are growing and multiplying and new baby shrimp can be seen. I made some screen lids and added them to the bins so I can use them with killifish without them jumping out. Several additional plant types are added for water root testing. And the axolotl in the pools now have legs and are about two inches long. The hornwort has turned a dark crimson color in the sun. The trees are just now beginning to fill in and shade the greenhouse in late April. Vegetable sprouts are repotted and put into place. Water temperatures hovered around 72 degrees, sometimes dipping as low as 65 or getting as high as 80, but they were generally ideal for fish. The outdoor highs were 50 to 85 degrees in April, usually about 74. Lows were 71 to 46, usually about 58. And overall, in April, everything did fantastic. Coming into May, the endlers and neo shrimp have been growing and multiplying. The pool was water changed, which exposed one really large axolotl and dozens of smaller ones. A week later the water had gone completely clear, and the large one was captured and moved indoors, but not before it had apparently eaten most of its siblings. Only one other axolotl was found. The flagfish began laying hundreds of eggs weekly. The mops were rotated to a second bin to hatch the fry. 
Some newly acquired pygmy killifish and pygmy sunfish are added to bins. The tree canopy is now full. The greenhouse is almost completely shaded from all but morning and evening sun. The plants are continuing to do well even in the reduced light, but the hornwort has returned to its regular green color. The frog bit is now growing again. Daphnia cultures remain dense if fed regularly, but survive in fishless bins with reduced numbers even if they don't get fed. The first green beans are harvested. Squash and cucumber show nice, no signs of fruit, likely due to a lack of pollinators within the greenhouse. The Java moss experiment is finally showing some signs of growing. It's doubled in size and both bins with substrate at about the 60 day mark. The bin with no substrate went dry for a week and the moss hasn't grown very well. The experimental water plants continue to do well, most having roots by the end of May. I installed an exhaust fan with a thermostat near the end of the month to combat the expected summer heat. For May, the water temperatures hovered around 77 degrees, swinging as low as 72 or as high as 84. Very good for most fish. Outdoor highs were 66 to 93 degrees, usually around 82, and the lows were 75 to 53, usually around 64. In summary, for the spring, for the March to May time period, the water temperature stayed in the 60 to 85 degree range with no intervention, no fans or heaters needed. Outdoor temperatures were moderate and ideal this spring, but there were some dips and spikes that could have caused issues. The greenhouse appears to have done a good job in helping to mitigate these and help maintain a more average water temperature. Unsurprisingly, plants did fantastic in the greenhouse. Only a few fish were introduced, but those showed increased spawning and fry in late spring as the water warmed. More than I typically see indoors. All my fish, indoors and out, benefited from the massive amounts of Daphnia produced. I expect spring and fall to be the best seasons, and this spring did not disappoint. As we move into summer, the heat may be an issue. Hopefully with the fan and shade, it'll be manageable. I may need to install additional measures such as a mister or a smog cooler. The goal is to keep most species in the greenhouse year round. I'll post another update in September to let you know how the summer went. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those future updates and post any suggestions or questions in the comments. If you like this, click that like button and until next time, thanks for watching.